Chicken Code is part three of my Dehancer film emulation color grading series. Just something I uh, recently got interested in because Dehancer released some updates in Final Cut Pro. I've mostly been using DaVinci Resolve to color grade, edit every all of my projects since around February. And Dehancer released some new updates, so I'm circling back to Final Cut Pro, seeing if it's something I really want to use because it's hard to, or it's tricky when trying to use ProRes RAW in DaVinci Resolve, and but you can use ProRes RAW in Final Cut Pro pretty easy. And the Sony FX3, which I'm shooting on now, does shoot ProRes RAW externally. And I would like to take advantage of that to see if it's something I really want to use. I've watched a ton of videos on using it and they say it's not worth it, but I still want to test it out for myself. So this is me kind of circling back using some of the new features in Dehancer that's in Final Cut Pro. Um, but yeah, let's see where it goes. But right now in Dehancer in Final Cut Pro, we're going to be looking at one of the new features, which is called film damage. In Final Cut Pro right now, I already have a few clips that I've been working on, all the same clips, but using different features. But we're gonna start over with actually pulling in Dehancer, applying it to a kit, to a clip, and then converting it from uh, Log to Rec. 709, putting on a film, uh, you know, kind of grading it and using a film uh, simulation on it, and then seeing how it looks with the film damage feature. So let's hop in Final Cut Pro and see how it looks. So right now we're in Final Cut Pro. I have this clip right here that I've shot on the video of my everyday carry video, which I'll link down in the description below the like button. So let's take a look at it. So this is log. It has not been converted just yet. So we're going to look for the dehancer, which you can find over in the side effects bar right over here. Let's go down to the film emulation. As we can see here, and we have Dehancer Pro version two, which we'll click and drag over to the clip. So you do have the option to click and drag over to the clip, but let's undo that. And if you have adjustment layers, you can also grab an adjustment layer. So let's drop a correction adjustment layer, drop it over top. Even though these are titled different things, it really doesn't matter. They all do the same thing. It's just labeled differently. So let's go ahead and grab Dehancer, drag it onto the adjustment layer. And as you can see, it still loads and it affects the footage. And it only affects the footage when the adjustment layer is above the clip that we're working on. So let's put, leave it here, click on the adjustment layer. And now we're gonna go over to the side effects bar where you can find Dehancer and make sure that it is showing and as it opens up, as you can see, you have all of your features and effects in the sidebar for Dehancer. Scroll up and down so you can see it. Now we're going to click on the source and we're gonna change it to choose camera from Rec. 709 because we haven't converted the footage at all in Final Cut Pro in order for it to pull as a Rec. 709 image. We're going to convert it right in Dehancer. So we choose camera, the camera we shot this on is the Sony FX3. So we're going to choose Sony. The camera, we're going to choose FX3, Cinema Line FX3. And the format we're going to choose is S Log Gamut Cine ISO 12800 because that is where I shot it at. And as you can see, it fully converts the image to Rec. 709. It already has somewhat of a look to it. So we're going to go down. And because when you load Dehancer, it comes with a film simulation already applied. But let's turn that film simulation off for right now so you can see how it looks naturally. Let's just uncheck these boxes. Turn off film grain. Make sure nothing else is uh, checked. Now we're going to go down to monitor. And as you can see in monitor, you can also check your false color. We can turn on clipping and we see right here that the pen is clipping on the iPad, the Apple Pencil. We can turn that off and we can go to false color as well. And so we can see right in Dehancer, we can check our false color for skin tones and everything. So we'll leave that on really fast as we convert this. And that's one feature that I do wanna highlight is that it does have false color in Dehancer. So let's go and reduce the exposure just a bit, just to bring it down to a workable range. Let's just go with negative 0 0.10. Let's try negative 
0 0.20, see how it looks. I think that's pretty good. Now let's go ahead and turn off false color and see where we are. And you can also mess with the temperature or the tint. And since we're not really doing much with, um, like I'm not using any color charts or anything, I'm just gonna use these and use my eye, which you should probably make sure you have a color chart in the image somewhere in order to balance out the colors. But I think that looks pretty good. Oops, changed the wrong one. I think that's cool, but we also have this film developer thing right here, which we will be talking about in another video. And we're gonna go back to film, turn on the film, and you can choose pretty much any film you like to use. Any of these, all of these options. I've been playing around with the Procudin Gorski 1906 Experimental. I really like how it looks. I would typically kind of push and pull depending on the look that I'm going for on that certain day. I think right in the middle was pretty good. We'll also show you film compression. See if it does anything to the image. It obviously does something to the image, but this is typically how I, you know, work in the enhancer. Just play around with it, see how it looks. Then we have the black point and expand, but I typically don't mess with that until I know which film I'm gonna use, which film print I'm gonna use. And I usually stick with the Kodak 383. Let's make sure it's on so we can see what it's doing to the image or I stick with the Kodak Endura Glossy Paper, which still gives it like a film print, but it doesn't really change the color and the contrast as much as it does with the Kodak 382, 2383 or the 35513. And that is a whole different workflow. The Cineon Film Log, I don't really <laughs> know much about that one, but let's go with the Kodak 2383. Let's turn on the analog range limiter. And if we, as we look at our charts over here let's see if i can cannot let's go ahead and expand this if we look at our histograms and i forgot with vector scopes if we look at them over here we can see where everything is falling you could do a window and kind of get the skin tones where you want them and everything but that's more uh a little more advanced but we're just going to stick with Making sure we get the, make sure we get these looking good. Let's change that back. And we're gonna start with the black point. Make sure it's on as we start with the black point. Just to get it to a good place. Just wanna make sure the zero line right here, we're not going below that zero. And on these as well, and your vector scope. But the vector scope is more, I say, for monitoring the colors in the film or the, in your clip, but this is just a, a quick preview of what we're doing. So I'll quickly run through this, target white. You can have your whites look a little more orange or a little more yellow or a little more blue. And I typically go with a little more yellow. Exposure, you can take that down a little bit, add a little more contrast take away some contrast. But one feature I like to point out is the clipping. I like to turn the clipping on so I can see if I'm clipping anywhere. Go back to tonal contrast. Give it a little more contrast. Pretty good. So now some of the features like color head, you can kind of go in a little more depth of like how you want your colors to look. You know, tweak it as much as you want. You can turn on the film grain, halation, bloom, but what we're gonna look at is this barrier right here, film damage. We're gonna turn on film damage and it comes with a preset already in, but I noticed that when it is on, it doesn't really show much. I guess you can see a little bit of it on the 16 millimeter if you look right here, right here. I'm gonna play through the clip to see how it looks. It's not gonna play back much, but if you had one of the newer M1s or M2s or upcoming M3s, it would run much faster. And as you may be able to hear, the fan has just kicked on on the Intel Mac. But let's go ahead to custom. And with the custom, you can scale up your certain grain. Let's see the dust amount. We can add more dust. As you can see on the screen, you can scale it up, scale it down.
than the size balance, bigger or smaller. You can add more white or black. You can basically fine tune it to however you want, but let's just take a look at it, see how it looks. And that is the film damage feature in Final Cut Pro. I think it's awesome. Definitely have some ideas for how I want to use it. One of the main features I wanted to highlight as of right now, definitely some others that I do. But right now I'm just playing around the Dehancer, getting the feel for how to use it in Final Cut Pro um, and getting to know how to use a little more of the features for some projects that I am working on, some video projects, also working on some photo projects. So if you want to learn more about the photo projects, you can watch this video right here where I talk about taking out the Fujifilm X-H1 and the Fujifilm X100F out on a photo shoot run. And you can watch this video or this playlist right here where I talk more about using Dehancer. This is part three, check out part two and part one. And um, there's definitely gonna be some other parts coming out if you're interested in Dehancer and learning, out, learning about how to use it. But I wanna thank you for liking. If you got any value out of this video, definitely hit the subscribe button while staying awesome. Stay awesome. Thank <laughs> you.